Welcome to the B-Sound Podcast. Today we have Brian Barr and Noah Coaster. Did I pronounce that right? No, but I've been called worse. Uh, 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 it's Kester, the O side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. All right. Today we have Brian Barr and Noah Kester, who make up two-thirds of the heavy doom rock band, A Seed. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Was that an accurate description? Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that works. It works. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That works? <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, well... So would you mind introducing yourself to our audience so they know who you are? I don't know. Uh, I'm Noah Kester. Uh, I play bass and vocals in Aceeve. Um, I Brian Barr. I do guitar and vocals. Um, and mainly me and him kind of do some noise and synth. Yeah. Some, sprinkled in. Yep. Yeah. Some right. noise and synth? Yeah. Right on. Um, cool. So... Um, I'm just curious what, so what, what did you guys, how did you guys come together? Let, let's start with that. Okay. Uh, well, it started with you really. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, it was just Brian here's solo project back way back when. Yeah. I started, I started this as a solo project back in 2007. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of did like an initial record on my own. <laughs> Um, Eric that plays drums in the band. It, it, me and him have been playing in, in bands since like we were in high school. Um, he played drums on the first record, just as me being like, "Hey, man, will you do these these drums?" Because um, my programming was terrible at the time. So I, then you know, did a couple, did a couple. Um, and anyways, Eric ended up joining like a little bit later on, a couple years on, and then we you know had gone through. Um, a couple members until Noah joined in with 2017. 2017. Okay. So um, yeah, we had about three. We we had one bass player, like noise dude, in the beginning. Um, from and then like uh, Drew Bissell, who plays the New Standards Men as well. And then my brother was in the band for a little bit. Um, actually, Kevin yeah. Kevin Hansen. Um, would did did just straight up noise for uh, for a good for around 2015 uh, 2013 and 2015 and then it was my brother and then and then Noah. So, <laughs> when you say straight up noise is that just like that was yeah he was just like band? literally like n- yeah. like knobs like sit just pedals and knobs oh that's he, awesome like, he used a little bit of a computer like a little bit and then he did vocals as well oh, uh, right on but for the most part it was just textural noise um, so for the most part. and then um, I just filled it. I just used a bigger rig and tried to fill in the bass. <laughs> you know. So are you so. a three piece now? Then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, three piece. Okay. And then um, the drummer you said Eric is that Eric Dirks? Yep. Okay. One of one of because there's another down. there is another Eric Dirks that's a drummer. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to remember what. And he was in was it Dead Emperors? He was in Denver, Dead Emperors for like a hot minute, I think. Okay, okay. that's that's yeah. Okay, I, I it's, it's been it? a weird. It's been weird having two doppelganger names in the yeah. same town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't um, even know. I, I mean, I know Eric Dirks from Dead Emperors. Yeah. So. Is he, is he a band too? Wow. I can't remember, I can't <laughs> <that> <laughs> yeah. Why <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I was in Slipknot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't in Slipknot? That's in Iowa. Come on. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh man. So, um, uh, speaking of pedals, what what pedals do you have on your boards right now? Oh my god. <laughs> well, what's your favorite pedal? Let's we can make it there. Mine is mine's pretty simple. It's I mean I got the what is it the major green. Comp- uh, compression yeah yeah the uh, four screen yeah compressor. mxr overdrive uh iron pig uh which i like what you explained it was like a well-behaved rat pedal uh, oh, okay yeah and then uh collision black hole symmetry uh which is a great three-in-one pedal which is fuzz reverb delay oh wow yeah, and it's it's a treat. It's been a lot of fun to play with, not only on bass but with synth as well. Uh, and then the uh, Ditto Jam Looper, uh, 
uh, the one with the external mic that can actually, uh, like, you make a loop and then it will adjust itself to the tempo. So it's like basically it will play to the drummer rather than a drummer playing to the loop. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's, that's something I've been trying to get the hang of lately. So, yeah. but, but that's really all I have on mine. I'm very kind of bare bones with a little bit of frill, but, but right yeah, to you, however, yeah, it's mine's like a revolving, a revolving cast of pedals. Like I have a shelf of pedals at home, but, um, the main thing I've been using, I have, I use a uh, origin effects, um, stacked compressor. Um, and then I ha- I use two, uh, black Hawk amplifier ball rugs. I use one for low gain and one for high gain. Um, and then I also have a blue sky, a Strymon blue sky and a Strymon dig delay. And then the blue sky reverb. Um, and then I also, I, um, I have a, a hologram infinite jets on my board as well. And a hologram, uh, dream sequence. Then I also, what are those? Have, uh, okay. So the, the, the infinite jets is kind of like a granular, like kind of sustain pedal mm-hmm. and it picks up your signal. And then like, depending on the effect that you could have on it, it like it, it, it'll it'll take it and track it and then like sometimes it'll like blur and granulize your like your lines it can also kind of act as a freeze pedal a little bit too but you can also add like synth and like glitch effects to it so it's pretty cool it's kind of like a like um for for like kind of more um like cinematic sounding or like ambient sections Okay. And then the dream sequence is literally, a, a, it's like a sequence pedal. Like it'll sequence like a, it doesn't sound like a synthesizer, but it sequences your guitar lines like a, se- like a, like a, um, like a sequencer. So like you can play and then there's like sequences that will go and you can actually hold those sequence. So then you play over top of it. I mainly use that stuff in like my other, my like, solo project granular breath and mainly use those in that like um because that's a more of a drone project um but i'd rather than have two boards i just have one big board sure (laughs) 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 and then i and then and then i also have uh the the uh um game changer plus pedal Hmm. uh which is like a sustained pedal and then last for the most part besides all the uti- some of the utilitarian things is the uh AMA it's the um forget suddenly like AC noises AMA which is a uh reverb bit crusher pedal oh nice i really like bit crushers but reverb bit, bit crusher so does it put bit yep. crushing on the reverb yep you can turn it off though so yeah it it actually you can run it as just a bit crusher or you can it 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 does a bit crush like i think after the reverb I think. Okay, but yeah. you can turn it off. You can turn the crush off, the big crusher on or off, and you can also just dial back the reverb and run it without. It also works as a great reverb on itself. Interesting, so, interesting. Like the AC noise. Yeah. I've got like like ten other pedals like sitting on a shelf at home, but those are the main. Those are the main ones. Not going into like a billion other. Ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so. Well, then, since we've already talked about pedals, what what other gear do you guys do? Um, like, what kind of amp are you playing through? Well, I'm using a Mesa Boogie 400 Plus. Ooh. Um, and usually I'm, I mean, I'm using your Atlas cab. Yeah. Right? Down. Like, I got a small practice space. And, of course, we have to use straight up Atlas cabs because I hate my hearing. Um, oh, yours are worship. Those are the worshipers. Oh, those are the worshipers. Yeah, yes. the Atlas okay. cabs are on my side. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I have, I have, I have no. <laughs> two, two worshiper, two worshiper, two by fifteen, mm-hmm. and that's what he's using stacked. Yeah. That's my and practice then, amp with the with the Mesa, <laughs> and then I use um, 
two Atlas 412s, and then I use a Hilvish. My main amp is like a Hilvish uh, uh, Beta Free into a Freyette Power Amp. So, oh wow, that's, so that's, that's where those big doomy tones come out of. Then, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we both have rack cases. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. It's pretty hilarious. Like two full stacks with just like these heavy ass rack cases. Yeah. That we, that we and what, like. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying you're like in a, like a tiny, tiny room because Noah's like, oh, my hearing is. You're, oh, There's yeah. always the joke about bringing uh, full stacks to the basement show, and we're we're pretty guilty. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We make that joke relevant, like so. right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, other than that, I mean, we also know what a volume knob is, so yeah, turn it down. Yeah. But, like, it's it's still pretty loud. It's but still like, pretty loud. well, Eric hits hard. Yeah, that's another thing. That's like, Eric is just straight up just slams on stuff. Yeah, so, Eric is a super loud drummer, and he like is really good at tuning his drums to where they are loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it's very cymbal heavy. So there's all there is that kind of like no and I could turn down, but then it would just be drums. Like I've tried turning down, but like <laughs> they just like bring it down the volume a little bit, but mm-hmm. and then it's just drums. Yeah, like he is like, and it's probably just there's a you know back and forth there, but like he's a super loud drummer, so we kind of have to match that. And also, like I guess like we're we're trying to achieve where he's like pushing a little bit more air to like have more weight, but yeah. like not necessarily volume. Sure, but in that it's still ridiculous in 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 that small of a space. Yeah, we just don't know any better. We don't, <laughs> don't have anywhere else to practice, really. <laughs> yeah, co- like COVID and life changes definitely made practice uh, just a little more difficult. So I just decided to just bring it all to my place. And when I and here I got this long hallway down there. And that's where I thought we were going to be practicing, but there's no outlets. Great. Oh, yeah. and all of a sudden, there's this tiny room over to the side that has all the outlets. And I'm like, awesome. Great. Yeah. So but it ended up working out really well. We did a little bit of soundproofing down there. So that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, other than that, like going back to the equipment and stuff, it's, uh live um i'm usually using like a, a pv215 and uh my ampeg pro 410 um and that usually that right there i mean i don't need anything massive that really does it right there for me especially with that mesa i mean that mesa could do anything i yeah, think i would think so it's my yeah. baby so yeah that thing's one of the best sounding bass amps ever mm-hmm. it's my Probably my favorite bass amp. Yeah. To be, be, be honest. All and everyone was favorite. talking about like SVTs. And then I finally tried one and I was like, yes. <laughs> 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 I just, I felt bad. But like, but I, I mean, ever since I got the Mesa, I was, I, I never looked back. So. Yeah. Yeah. Those Mesas are intense. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of live, have you guys played anything yet live? Have you guys played any shows yet? Nope. No, not yet. So I see you have some upcoming this month, right? Yeah, we have one. That one that's for stages, that one we already were that was a that was a streaming thing. Okay. We were at Angler back in March. And that's a stream that's coming up actually in like that's a week. A, yeah, August 18th. Yeah. I think it is. Yep. Yeah. And yep. of course, Cat. <laughs> but uh, and then we have one, the one at Wake in September. Um, but we haven't played a show. Like besides that stages set, we haven't played in front of an audience. Besides the couple few people at the stages thing that were at the Angler, um, we haven't played live since like March. Oh wow! Like, yeah, we, we, did, we did a tour in January, and then like we had one show in March, and it was literally a week before like everything shut. You know, everybody was just like, "Oh, we're done." Right. Like, was, like at the show, I was even kind of like, "Should I give my?" give you a hug. I don't know. Like, yeah. like people were talking about it at the show. Like it was very much like, 
this might be the last time we're doing this for like a, you talk a about March. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, and every, and you know, it's funny too, because like the show we played where we were all like that, I think maybe two days prior at games, I was at a show and it was like, uh, it was the last show. I think I went to like pit Lord traffic death. Um, it was the same thing, no matter what show you went to that, that first week of March, everyone's just kind of like, do we be doing this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, like, yeah. and then next thing you know, everybody was just like, nope, we're not doing it. So yeah, that, that was intense, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so that's why the, the stages thing was really awesome. I thought, uh, yeah, that one was a fun one. And that was before, like, you know, we knew, you know, kind of, we headed into the summer where things started kind of opening up. Like that was really like, that was a fun one. We like wrote an entirely like completely arranged a whole new set to do that, to, to, to do the stages set. And it's mostly kind of more droney mm-hmm. stuff. Okay. So yeah. more droney, like the stuff that's like, um, like 20 minutes long, those kind of songs where they're really, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a one, it was 25, 25 minutes straight, like no stopping. Oh, nice. So, yeah. so we wrote like an entire, and we're never, we never like, we're, I think we're taking sections and putting them into new songs, but in that arrangement, we're not doing that again. Like that was like a one-time thing that we did that or that specific arrangement. So, uh, like, like I said, we've taken, we're, we're kind of maybe taking some sections from it, but we don't plan on like recording that piece or that sure. movement of music, I guess, or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it ever again. So if you want to check it out, that's yeah. your only chance. That's, that's our <laughs> only documentation of that. Said yep. that so, yep. uh, I, I take it. It was well recorded though. And like, you know, like, yeah, they, were, they, and, yeah they might, it. they, they might everything like, uh, you know, it high def. Yeah, it's high definition, like recorded, like it, it like should be. I mean, I haven't, I won't see it, and we won't see it until the day it goes up. But yeah, we haven't seen it yet. Oh, wow, it's gonna be surprised yeah. to you guys. Yeah, yeah I know. Guys, and I mean, I like through that. I don't remember what I played. So, like, <laughs> oh well, <laughs> it's gonna be. I'm just gonna be as as uh, it's gonna be new to me, just as anyone else. So. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's it's like because we we recorded we re- we recorded in February for a um, for a couple things that, were, that are going to be released later on, and like and then immediately like right after we recorded in February, had like a month to work on this 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 piece for 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 stages. So it was literally like we just our our January February. And March were like insanely busy, but we weren't even playing shows. It was it was just writing and working on stuff for for these specific things. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. Yeah, good way to stay busy. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was it was kind of like with any other like band or performer in like 2020. And how are how are you going to stay relevant without touring or yeah. playing shows or anything? Because like before it happened. We were, I mean, me, I can only speak for myself, was touring for three years straight. You know, once I jumped on the band, mm. we were on the road. And uh, so when, when this happened, I was just like, so am I just going to hang out in my basement for the rest of my life now? <laughs> was, that, was that a dream? Yeah. Like, but it was, I mean, it was really cool to see, like, uh, some labels actually thriving or i mean doing really good through that pandemic because everyone didn't know like what's the point in making a record if i can't play it live and people would think stuff like that yeah but sure. uh yeah, it, it, some other some other bands ended up making beers i don't know like it's, yeah. it's like yeah we ended like i mean it's it's kind of like uh but it, i think because people we're stuck inside. They were just like, well, can't go to shows. I'm just might as well buy records. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I know my record collection, like got pretty big over the last year. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
stuff would just show up and I'd be like, yeah. Oh, oh I did that. Yeah. I did <laughs> order that. Carly, sure. to the point where my, my wife was just like, how many records do you need? I'm like, apparently I, I'm never done. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. I need all of them. <laughs> all of them. All of the records. But, you know, it's like some, I'm like, admittedly, I, I don't remember ordering this. <laughs> yeah. And tell you the truth, 2020 had some really good albums. I yeah. Like, mm. uh, I mean, bands like uh, Primitive Man and uh, uh, Hum, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, on record. yeah. So it was, it was oddly, I mean, a good year for music, but it was also everyone was like, what do we do? You know, mm-hmm. we can't play live. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and with, Bit and with shows happening now, it's like I I'm pretty apprehensive still going out to these things and like yeah. But at the same time, like you know, like with with the stages thing, everyone was professional. Everyone kept their distance. Everyone was trying to be courteous, mm-hmm. and it was it was a great time and. We have one show this year coming up that we're playing, and it's on September 11th. It's at Wake Brewing um, in Rock Island, and I mean, I'm and I I know the Paris brothers who own that place, and I just know everyone's going to be chill and safe and all that stuff. So that makes me feel a little comfortable coming back into live shows and stuff like that. Sure. Plus, Side. Plus, it's outside. It's outside. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, that helps. That helps. Yeah, we were we were like pretty steadfast against like not playing anything this year. Yeah, we were. But then, like that one came up, and we're like, ah. I think we've turned down quite a few shows for this year. Yeah, like we were just because we were we're during the middle of trying to write a new record, and then also like it's not we're not a hundred percent like just really that safe, you know. Sure. So, um, you should like be okay I, with the outdoors one, though. I would think. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that was yeah. another thing. It was just like everyone involved we know are are way cool, and you know, gonna be safe about it. Sure. We Plus, there's a, a lot of good bands on that, and I was like, yeah, I, I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw who yeah. who were a couple. I, I saw the lineup and it was like, wow. Um, do you, do you uh, remember? Longzilla. That's a big one I remember. But yeah, and uh, there was Savage Master. Uh, there is uh, Fister, our friends from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Another reason we jumped on the bill. Yeah, um, we toured with them a couple times. Yeah, and they're great, cool. great people. Uh, Squilla Grind. Which are amazing, um, and um, Black, Tusk. Black Tusk. Yep. Black Tusk is playing. So and very cool. we're, we're starting it off. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Open, which is so, great for we're we're like really stoked about. Yeah, that. we're actually way into just like so we're first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So, two thirty in the afternoon. Yep. It's like two two thirty or something like that. So, like we play for thirty minutes, then we just can hang out. Yeah. Don't worry about it so well that's that's a that's a cool gig then yeah i mean yes, and it only much. it's like five bucks to go to that show oh wow all well, those bands that are really good it's five bucks and wow wait brewing does some good beer so sure mm-hmm. so yeah. heavy music that's the place to be that day yes definitely um i know we were talking um no and i were talking online about uh you guys recorded electrical audio and uh, how was that? What was that experience like? <laughs> that was, it was, it was interesting. It was definitely yeah. an adventure of sorts because we went, uh, we recorded uh, our last album there mm-hmm. and we used studio B. Um, and from my from what they told me, like Studio B's got that like high ceiling, like just brick wall, so that like that reverberation, I would say, or just mm-hmm. the acoustics really help out like our drum sound. 
so I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and then uh, our friend Shane uh, from Hell Street came down um, and recorded. And uh, at, he's out in Milwaukee with Hell Street Recordings, but he loves recording there. He loves recording his electric yeah. a lot. Yeah, you can get you can get um, you pretty much you can get like a helper for the day. Like it's like an extra hundred bucks just if you want to bring in your own engineer. Mm-hmm. And, you just get a helper for the day and they come in and they just answer any questions like, Hey, where do I patch this in or where this, where's this mic or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, uh, but we all showed up and it was, was it like some sort of weird storm or? Oh yeah, no, that was like in January. So we were pretty much snowed in. Yeah. We were snowed. Like it was, it was, uh, what was it? 2019. So it was like, when yeah. we record that and then it was literally like six like nuts but like a good foot of snow on the ground already and then it snowed pretty much almost the entire time yeah. we were there mm-hmm. so we were like stuck there for the weekend but the, the weird thing is so like we had recorded there two more times before but like this particular time we were recording the album Shellac was rehearsing the entire weekend in Studio A. Hmm. So the entire weekend was just hanging out in Shellac's clubhouse and running into them in the kitchen or a, them peeking their heads in or walking or, or Albini walking in to grab like a microphone or something like that. And like, I know like Todd Trainer was like super like into Eric's drums, <laughs> like asking <laughs> questions. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit that the first day was, it was, I just like, was kind of like, uh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. It was was just kind of funny at first, like to me, yeah, that first day I was a little starstruck seeing all three of them and hanging out with them in the kitchen, like talking about the movie vice or like our favorite candy in like growing up. Yeah. (laughs) It's just like a little starstruck I'm having these conversations. And then by yep. the second or third day, I'm just like, look, man, I know I'm just in your treehouse. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm, you know, Steve, Steve's just sitting there on the couch watching something on uh, Discovery Channel, just eating McDonald's or something. And I'm just <laughs> out of the way. Like, yeah. just, but, uh, but it was, it was interesting too, because that first day, I mean, it, if I learned anything from it, it was just like figure out what you want to do. But like, what's like what? Because like we went through all those. I was having bass troubles with like my pickups. Oh no! Like the first, like the first day, we literally spent getting drums, sounds, and bass tones. That's it. Like that was the mm-hmm. first day out of the three. Yeah. We didn't track anything and we did it for 12 hours wow <laughs> like what was the hold up there well we were just being indecisive for one yeah. and to me it was like uh it i've never had so much access to whatever the hell i wanted we, <laughs> so it was just kind of like dude i'm and i'm having like i said i'm having bass problems with my pickups uh, that's why the bass was dubbed Squealy Dan. It just kept feeding back if you looked at it. Yeah. So we were trying to figure out, okay, we got all these pedals. Maybe we could figure something out. And we didn't. We ended, <laughs> up, we ended up going pretty much back to one of the first sounds that we got. Yep. Like, and it was, it was just, because uh, I mean, it's like, so Electrical has almost every like Earthquaker device pedal on their wall because like earthquaker devices just like sent them all of them for free. But then on top of that, there's like a ton. So there's like 40 or 50 pedals mm-hmm. on the wall, uh, like in studio B that you can just try. So we went down the rabbit hole <laughs> with all these pedals to find this bass tone yep. that we were trying to find. Oh, and then also because we see, so it, it just so happened. So, like, we only brought your 215. We didn't bring the 410. 
because the van had broken down, I think, and then we had to take Eric's minivan, didn't we, or something like that? I think so. Yeah, like we, so we so we had to slim everything down. And electrical doesn't have a 410. They just have like they have base cabs, but they're like a lot of them are old. They're either a 15 or like they're like very random on the base caps. Mm-hmm. So we are like that didn't help the situation because I think like the 410 is much more direct sounding where the, the 15 is much bigger sounding. We were trying to get both. So we were like, and then top of that, the bass. And then like, it was just like, man, we, we, we spent out like, hours. Yeah. like but, it, but, but it also, we like Shane is a drummer um, as well. Our engineer, uh, the engineer that, that did this. And he like, he was obsessive this time around about the drum sound. He was. Mm-hmm. like especially the like it was literally literally like the other two times we had recorded for splits there you know we had like a very small time constraint so he he would like you know we pretty much had to like set up and go but this time around, i was like this is your full next full length i'm gonna like knock it out of the park with everything and it was like hours of like I think we need to move that room mic like just a little <laughs> bit like, and it was just like oh my god dude <laughs> <laughs> It's it's yeah, it's, but I mean, you trust him. It sounds great. I mean, it's it does. Nothing. But I mean, I remember like getting up in the morning, the next morning, and having to be like, okay, now I have to set up my guitar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't tracked anything. Yeah. So, so that first that first day was pretty like rough. We did, and I mean, yeah. we were just trying to figure things out. And I mean, it was it was personal, like my first time ever being there. No, second. Yeah. Well, it's my second. second right? but like, like the first we time were, was like... We were weird. there for like a weekend and I was just kind of like, yeah. okay, like this hunker down and you know, in some of that, that album we were writing as we were going, especially like lyrically. So, you know, uh, and I mean, it was it was on top of writing what you're going to record that weekend and then figuring out your tone and, uh, and your sound and all that. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I definitely by the second day was starting to feel the pressure yeah. a little bit, which is fine. I, I mean, it was cool. Like it was just one of those things where it's just like, I'm, I'm not making, I'm not using this time smart. Yeah. You know, Second day in, all right, let's go. Let's make an album, you know, like yeah. Bob, Todd, get out of the way. Like, it was just, <laughs> like <laughs> um, yeah, but then, then everything started rolling and it was really fun. And um, tell you the truth, my favorite was just watching Eric do the, uh, the track uh, Suffocating Burden, which he's just basically doing some cool gong stuff like feedback stuff yeah and uh and i mean i think the track on the album ended up being like about three and a half minutes yeah. or something but the original one's like 20 or it's so. like 20 minutes oh wow it was one of those things where i was just sitting back like yeah keep going <laughs> <laughs> it's like didn't so like i i think i was gone when this when this actually happened i think it's I like so like our label is, is out of chicago thrill jockey so like I like at one point when they didn't need me, I was just like, I got to go. And like we I had to have like kind of like a, a meeting with them or whatever for like talking about the, what we're going to do for the, the album as far as PR and all that stuff. So like I get in the van and like trudge across town while they're still there doing that track. I didn't like Bob Weston like walk in and was yeah. like looking down. From, so like you can look down like the, the like so Studio B, have you ever seen pictures of it? No, you, 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 you apprenticed, or what did you, what is your be- backstory? Of? Oh, well, I, so I mentored, uh, Steve Albini is my mentor, right? He, okay, okay, me, right. like I learned under him to audio okay, engineering. Okay. So, but I've yeah. never actually been there. I've never, we did it in a different studio over in uh-huh. uh, France, but um, that's, that's so right. I, I've never been to electrical audio. He's invited me there and said, Hey, you can, you know, engineer anybody here, you know, you if you want there. to. So, <laughs> I just need to get over there and do it someday. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you definitely like, it's magical. 
Yeah. Like that's just like the best. Like you want to stay there forever. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't ever want to leave every time I'm there. It's so great. No, but uh, but yeah, you were gone hanging out with Thrill Jockey, and uh, our friend Chris was uh, is Chris, right? It was the the camera. Oh, Josh. 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 God, I know. So we had a friend, people. we had a friend Josh Ford that does forward photography come in and like do video and do like photography and stuff the entire weekend, and not just hang out, mm-hmm. but he was doing video. And he was right behind Eric doing the gong stuff and all the noise stuff. And uh, me and Shane are in the, the boardroom, like mm-hmm. in the control. And uh, we're looking way, you could look right down into Studio B. And Bob Weston comes in and he's grabbing a cord or something. And then he just looks over and he just sees right down at Eric and, and Josh. And just like, what's he doing? And Shane, he's record it's gong he's got it right between the mic and the you know reverberation and all that and ah what's that guy behind him that's that's josh he's filming and taking shots of the whole weekend and stuff and then he just stares and then bob just goes i hate music (laughs) (laughs) shane just goes i think you're in the in the wrong game then man and bob just goes no 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 no. i don't i i just try to fix music and then he leaves <laughs> and i'm just like that is such a bob weston quote it's like yeah i'm just gonna try to fix music and just like with the most just <laughs> face like yeah. so it was it was fun and it was it was just it was it was really fun to see him just kind of trip like yeah. just, just be like what are you doing in here? Like, <laughs> so good. <laughs> we were going to rehearse in Studio B, and now you're taking up space. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I believe by the end, by all that time, uh, we recorded it, and we, we were finishing up. What, like, I swear we had to stay there. We had to stay an night. extra night. Um, we ran, like, I mean, we did like 12 to 14 hours for those like three days. We really crammed like four, um, four and a half days in three days, mm. like of time. Like it was like we were pretty much because you could stay at Studio B, like they have bunks and stuff. So we just stayed there the night, stayed the night. And we only had paid for like the like three nights or whatnot, mm. or maybe two nights. But, and then like uh, for Friday and Saturday. And then it was Sunday and like, there was a major storm and, and everybody's just like, they're like, I think it's Chris, Chris, Chris that runs. Chris is the one who like is kind of in charge. Yeah. Okay. Like it was like, you just stay the night, another night. Don't worry about it. Just stay the night. It's not worth, it's not worth trying to drive back to Iowa. You just stay the night. And like, we're, I think we were like the only, like they pretty much shut the lights off everything. There's not an intern, anybody inside. It's like literally us three. Shane left. Shane left, yeah. Because he lives in Milwaukee. So he's like, I'm going to go. But like, it was just us three in, in, in electrical audio by ourselves all night. We, and they're like, they're put on the council, like, here's the keys to, sh- to lock the door. Yeah, that was a weird one. It was just kind of yeah, like, like, gave well, us the keys to lock Electrical up. audio, here's the keys. <laughs> like, okay <laughs> all right <laughs> they seem pretty cool like that i mean steve told me yeah. he's like if you're ever there and you need a place to stay you know you can come to electrical audio you know it, so yeah. it, it sounds like they have well he's like if there's nobody staying there you can come here yeah. and hang out you know that yeah. kind of thing well, so, like, i mean everyone the, the staff there were nothing but laid back and cool like including steve you know yeah it's like ridiculously affordable too for what it is. Sure. Did you guys record all analog there? I mean, or did you guys like do Pro Tools type of stuff? In Pro Tools, Shane works in Pro out of Pro Tools, mm-hmm. and we don't we don't have the budget to spend a grand on 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 tape. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, we've done, I've done it in the past. Like I've recorded, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's also like. There, it's just not a. It's it's just it, it's not worth the like amount of money. Yeah, I know. I know. Steve pretty much just works on tape, right? Did yeah, you that's, just, yeah, that's when it, I worked like, with him. That's all he would work with. We would didn't do any 
you know, in the box stuff at all, any, any uh, digital stuff. Yeah. Which I get, like, he says, like, it's like, it's part of his workflow and to like re to learn all that stuff is fine. So yeah, we, we definitely, we just, Shane works out of Pro Tools. So we just, but then there's, oh, well, I put $10,000 worth of mics on your drum set. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like it's running through a Neve board and like, there's all this great gear that it's running to before it hits Pro Tools. For sure, Shane for sure. Point. He's like, you know, you could just say that you recorded, <laughs> and no one would know that. No one could be like, I listened to the record and they did not record me. <laughs> right. Well, Steve, <laughs> when when I when I saw when I met up with Steve, he brought his whole mic locker, and he had amazing microphones there. I mean, yeah. like microphones they don't even make anymore. That are mm-hmm. you know, you go on eBay and you try to look for like the kick drum mic he uses, and it's like eight thousand dollars or something like that. So, I mean, it's definitely, you're definitely getting your money's worth in tone just from the microphones and the, the gear you're going through. Yeah. Like it's, I think like, I think someone when we were recording or something, like, I don't know, I think it was on the full length, but we were taking photos and stuff. And like one of the photos, Shane happened to be like on the computer or whatever. Oh, yeah. And like some person was like, we're just swinging miss guys, like recording up the audio and going to Pro Tools. like, okay so like nothing else matters yeah like cause imagine if you just try to go straight to that tape you know mm-hmm. like shit. yeah <laughs> it's like the tape, it's yeah. just the magic there's like yeah. and you know the you know F, you know the ears of the engineer and all that other stuff it's just like eh, you know because yeah tape is ridiculously expensive it is it is it's super expensive like we could spend we could we could spend another day or two recording for the cost of the tape. Like, yeah, you know, if we ever want to have Steve record us, then yeah, well, I guess then then we're going to have to suck that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe just do an EP <laughs> or something. And... <laughs> but I feel like he's like put enough of an imprint into that place, like that drum room and that council and everything. Like, I feel like, Oh yeah. Everything's very deliberate of what he does. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, all in all, it was it was an interesting weekend, but it was fun. It was fun. I mean, and one of the reasons like I joined this band was to get a better understanding of stuff like this, of like production and recording and acoustics and gear. Like especially gear. I I came in just kind of the dumb punk rock guy just came with the riffs. You know, and my bass is just a TV theory like I've had since I was 13. And I just modded out the nut there just so it can hold that uh, that B string. Mm. So, I mean, and it was just like I just totally MacGyvered my stuff, you know, <laughs> and, work. and it didn't. But now it was just kind of like, OK, now I'm getting in the world of pedals. Now I'm figuring out like what. Like, do I want like a cab that's heavy, loud, or, or and cheap? Because I think we discussed this before. I forget who said it, but like when it came to cabs or amps or anything, you get the three choices: were heavy, loud, cheap. So, <laughs> but you only get two of those <laughs> right. at all times. You always get just two of those. So, so it's it's been really cool to like figure that stuff out and i kind of feel like sometimes i'm late to the game on it but like experiences uh like electrical audio i i mean i it was stressful at times but at the same i wouldn't trade it for anything yeah i i know i came out a little bit smarter right so any plans oh go ahead no, no, go, go, go uh, I was just going to say, any plans to go back there? Are you guys going to have recordings coming up soon? Mm. Uh, anywhere else, maybe, or just? Well, I mean, the, the last time we recorded was back in February. Yeah, we recorded at Shane's. At, at, back at Shane's uh, House Street Recordings in Milwaukee. And, uh, I mean, what we did, we only did two tracks. And we did it like in a day. And, yeah in one day but that sounded really good it sounded like really good like mm-hmm. shane did a really good job we went to shane's actual studio um 
we it just depends on what our like you know what the budget is once we get to it whether we want because we could spend if we want to go with shane again we could spend more time at shane's or spend less time on electrical yeah it's kind of like and, and you know we got really good results going to shane going going to shane i would think if we did maybe it would be like a we're gonna go to electrical to get those drums and then hike it back up hike it to milwaukee after that mm -hmm. and then retract everything else um, that's a cool idea yeah, I mean that if it, you know if we decide to do a Shane, we we talked about going with somebody you know with others just to like you know mix it up a little bit more, right? You know, yeah. I mean, there have been We're times where like, we've recorded vocals in home. my basement. Yeah. Like it was just like, yeah, let's go to electrical audio and get those drums and those vocals. We're just gonna do down in my basement there. Let me just move garbage there. <laughs> yeah. ready to make some music i'm like, pretty i'm pretty much stuck on the fact that i'm gonna always record my vocals at home or in your basement yeah that was another thing that was kind of funny too with the electrical audio experiences i think it was the first time i ever had, like i for me professionally had my uh vocals recorded <laughs> wonderful <laughs> That was fun, but <laughs> I, was, I was just like, yeah, I can hear myself perfectly, and I have no problem with that. <laughs> so, but also at the same time, it was just like, this could have easily been done at home. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, like, spent, like, this, the last year, like, like, upping, like, since I was stuck at home and recording at home a lot, I, like, invested a little bit in my home studio setup. So like I got uh, like a Universal Audio Apollo, and then I ended up getting a Heil PR40 to record vocals. So I can pretty much like do like a pretty good, get a really good. Like Shane even was like when we did the vocals for the last two things, he was like, "Man, those sounded really good. I had no problems with like mixing them or anything." I'm like, "I, I spent some money on." <laughs> <laughs> just those two pieces of gear just so i could never have to because i for me like it's just um doing screaming and then having to and then it's always the last thing you do you're like exhausted and for me i just end up frying my voice right like you know like even at, like every time in the last three or four years especially getting older like three or four years, like I've ended up blowing my voice and having to record them at home anyways. Like we're finishing them at home. Like sure. on the last on throws, I ended up finishing them one of the songs. And luckily Shane could mix it enough where it doesn't no one notices and my vocals vocals are all like super low. And then now I'm just like, I'm just doing them at home. I'm not even gonna attempt to do the studio. Yeah. Because then I can sit there and like arrange it and like, you know, if I need to just do this section to make sure my screams are nice and loud. And then I don't have to be like, Shane, could you just rewind it like a minute to this section? I could just do that myself. Right. Like a right. work, a work, a workflow thing, you know, like, so. yeah. I like how you're, you're both your guys vocals blend. Like you've got the deep guttural thing and then, you know, Noah's got the more, I don't know how you describe it more like just, loud screamo kind of thing <laughs> banshee <laughs> well yeah i guess <laughs> or the shriek or whatever shriek. have it yeah. yeah um yeah all my life i've always wanted to sound like brian but i never could so I'll that's a tough move i've tried it too it's tough it's tough it's, to hit that. Yeah, that island stuff i just you know and i always make the joke about well i'm 42 and still waiting to hit puberty so I, that's i can hit them high note it's like a mm, not <laughs> like but no, I just, it ended up, I was happy that it ended up working out because joining the band, um, I, I sang vocals in another band where it was a lot more thrashier and, and faster. So I didn't know if the high vocals were going to be just cheesy or just, or they were even going to work in a band that works with low frequency so much, you know, yeah. I mean, our, our tuning is drop A or something, you know, and it's just like, yeah. does, does anyone really want to hear somebody shriek over that? But 
but I was happy to see that like both our vocals, like it ended up matching really well. And it was just one of those, like for me just going, Oh, thank God. All right. Yeah. Okay. We kind of discovered that more like, like, it's like when you, when Noah first joined the band, it was like in the middle of a tour cycle. Like my brother left the band in the middle of a supporting a record. Like we actually had tours that were booked that were coming up. Mm-hmm. And like Noah joined the band. So like, and in that point, me, me and my brother both did vocals, but we were both pretty much in the same range. So Noah would just do Danny's parts. Like, so we didn't do them together. We kind of like discovered that when we did the snow burial split in the studio, we're like, let's, I'm just going to scream with underneath you or you scream, we scream, scream together. And, and Shane especially was like, that sounds so good. You should do more of that. <laughs> yeah. and so I started being like oh, maybe I'll try it in this part Yeah. so now it's become kind of a thing where we do the back and forth but then we'll also scream like the same things you know I, I feel like that dynamic adds like more dimension to the band so. for sure it makes you guys it, it just adds that much more uniqueness to what you're doing I think Thanks. yeah yeah all right well we're almost out of time here but like it only lets us do an hour or whatever so um uh one final question here and i ask this to everybody is there anything i should have asked you today that i did not (laughs) question the questioner uh (laughs) i no i don't really think i was thinking about when we were talking about steve and shellac and all that stuff Mm -hmm. he asked us about gear but he didn't ask us about what guitars we play Uh, (laughs) ah yeah let's hear it I, 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 yeah, I use a, uh, I have an EGC aluminum guitar. Oh, nice. Last year, yeah. I just used this opportunity to be like, hey, I use this guitar. <laughs> yeah, no, good point, good point. <laughs> like, I just talked about my hacked bass, and you're, you got an aluminum guitar. Right? <laughs> like, uh, so, and that, I think it sounds great. So. Yeah. It's, it's like definitely changed my playing and like everything, like the way, like, I like, it, it's, it's so much more sustain everything like it's like almost the perfect like i i have a nice like um edwards les paul that i used for years in this band and it sits on it like it sits on stand most of the time i pick it up and i'm like i should play this guitar and then i'm like eh. it looks like a toy <laughs> <laughs> we pick up this 10 pound aluminum piece <laughs> right oh, wow. so the aluminum guitar is actually heavier than a Les Paul. Oh, way heavier. Way heavier. Way heavier. Oh. Way heavier. Yeah, it's I was thinking heavier. it was like hollow. Wow. Okay. It is, but it's just like the aluminum neck and every like mine's like not mine has no wood at all. It is completely it's all aluminum. Mm-hmm. And it's a heavy guitar. It it's pretty heavy. And it's a baritone as well. Okay. So it's a like 27 and a half inch scale length. All right. Uh, so that like with the low tuning mm-hmm. helps out with that. Yeah, so. makes sense. Makes sense. Do you play that on in like currently, like um, in that show that's coming up on that's going to be streaming? Yep. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, we're about wrapped up here. Do you guys have any place that? How can people find you? Oh, uh, well, usually we run on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. <laughs> that's usually been working the best for us. Instagram. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you can find us. Anywhere like Bandcamp, uh, Spotify. Yeah, um, you can. Yeah, on Apple Music, and then Bandcamp's probably the best. You can always go to Thrill Jockey and bounce off of there. I deactivated our Twitter account, so <laughs> no loss there, really. Probably. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 we're just not good at it. Like I just That's, never. Yeah. Every time I opened it, I was just like, I don't want to do any. I don't want to post to this. <laughs> so it's just like I I finally just deactivated because it it's like. We do better on Instagram. We barely, we don't do very well on Facebook either. Mm-hmm. But like Facebook, we've had it for so long and there's just enough, just enough to keep it there still. Mm-hmm. But like Twitter, I was just like, I'm just going to deactivate this. Yeah. It was pretty funny when I deactivated it too. I did it like three or four days ago and it was like, sorry to see you. Like that little comment was like, sorry to see you go. Hashtag goodbye. <laughs> 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 Twitter, <laughs> sorry that I'm gonna hashtag goodbye. <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. I, I don't think it's very hard to 
I mean, uh, yeah. we did. Um, it was a very uh, unique name in the first place. Like you're not gonna pretty yeah. much. That's all you're gonna. If you type a seat in there, you're gonna get our band. Yep. So. I wasn't sure if it was actually a seat or a CV, you know, or something like oh, that. Yeah, or, the seat is how, but it's a yeah, obviously made up. So right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah. Okay. Well, Brian, Noah, thank you so much for being here. And uh, oh, thank you for having us. Thanks yeah. for having. Us. Thanks for having us ramble and just. Yep. Oh, it was fun. It's great to hear some of those stories and stuff. So yeah, good deal. Good deal. You're you're lo- you're in Iowa City, right? I'm in Iowa City. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll see you at a show whenever. It goes yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely <laughs> when it starts back up. <laughs> cool deal. So, All right, guys. Take care. Right. Take, Take care. Easy.